Well, um, I love independent film, and I think TV right now is exciting. Um, I feel like the studios are afraid to get really creative. They, they tend to do a lot of sequels. As you can see, they're doing all these superhero movies. Personally, I think it's boring. Mm -hmm. And I think that independent cinema takes more risks in telling more unique stories, less formulaic, more artistic. Mm -hmm. So you recently just wrote and directed uh, your first feature film uh, as an actor, director, or hybrid myself. I'm curious, is there anything, what's, what's the biggest thing that you learned in that process? Um, I love doing it so much. I hope I get to do it again. Um, I mean, finding, getting the money is challenging, you know, um, and I think it's just a learning, it's a definite learning curve. Um, I think that it's exciting that more female filmmakers are getting encouraged to tell their stories. Because I think as a woman that it wasn't you know, so common to see female directors or stories told from a female point of view with female writing and female directing. So I hope that we see that more in the future. This is obviously something you don't have to do. So what personal satisfaction is for you to, to, to do this sort of event? Um, well, I think it's great to support um, artists and young artists that are up, up and coming and just to, um, it's fun, it's fun being in a world where people are, it's great the studio they built here and they're supporting people in their artistic endeavors and I think it's fun to be around artistic people doing, making art. Yeah, I mean, being a woman in the business, definitely, you know, I don't want to be a person who's complaining a lot, but definitely it's very sexist, right? And so I think, like, if you look at men in movies, they get to be very sexual and not get judged, but it's the opposite for women, and I think horror films are an example of that. Really, if women have sex in horror films, you know they're going to die in the next scene, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's part of our puritanical, judgmental way of looking at women and their sexuality, and... Um, I think that there's so much ingrained sexism in, in the movie business that it's it's really disturbing, actually. As an actress, of course, you know it's so hard to to, to get work as an actress, and when you do get to the place where you have a successful career, you know you're just taking the jobs you're offered. You're not, you know, because I think I'm a feminist, but you know you're not always getting offered those jobs of like you know this strong female character. So I definitely feel like there was a part of me in a lot of jobs that I was doing where I was like, this is a story about a lot of men. And the women don't get a lot to do. Even today, if you look at movies like um, the Martin Scorsese movie, he gives barely any time to any of the female characters in that movie, right? So as a woman, I watch that and I go, of course he's so talented and he has this amazing body of work, but I don't think like he represents the female characters in that movie very strongly. And I don't think he gives them a lot of time or energy. And that's frustrating, you know? And I think, you know, if you look at the Golden Globes, like there were no female directors nominated. I think that's frustrating too came out during the Me Too mo uh, movement um, with a story about Harvey Weinstein. Um, I was also harassed by Harvey Weinstein and I talked about it in Variety. Um, so yes, there's definitely a lot of harassment in Hollywood and I think it's really refreshing that people feel that they could talk about it. I mean, it's not only in Hollywood, obviously it's been women in every field. And um, so I just think hopefully um, we're getting more evolved and we're getting to a point where women feel like we can be more comfortable in saying when we don't feel comfortable and men are more open to listening and some of these really bad guys are, you know, getting fired. Um, one of the uh, upcoming projects you have is the uh, television adaptation of The Stand, which has local interest here. Stephen King lives here part time of the oh, year. Yeah, that's so cool. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, getting to work on that project? I don't know if it's filmed yet, but if it has, what the experience has been like working on that? Yeah, you know, I was just in Maine too, so oh, okay. I was in his his summer home and yeah. his winter home. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't get to meet him, but he was on the set. Um, but it's so exciting to get to work on something that he wrote because obviously he's a genius. Um, and to get to work on his, this massive epic book that he wrote. I think it's going to be really good. They definitely are putting a lot of money into it. We shot in Vancouver, but they shut down all these streets and made it look like New York City. And then there's a scene where we go in the sewer and they, they built the entire sewer from scratch. Mm -hmm. And um, there were all these rats in that scene and I had to like have rats all around me. It's like rats attack me. <laughs> so it was a very Stephen King scene. Right. <laughs> Evil rats. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I think it's good writing and just kind of emotionally connecting to the story and um, just relating to maybe some aspect of whatever the characters are feeling and um, probably the same thing as when you read a book and you just get drawn into the book and you get sucked into the book mixed with, you know, the people who are involved, like the director, the other actors, that can also be a draw. 
Well, um, I think when you're a little girl and you grow up and you're watching TV, you're watching movies, you're watching, you know, television shows, and you see you yourself represented in certain ways, then it, you, you don't, you can't dream as big if you're watching shows and every doctor is played by a man, you know, or if you're a certain ethnic, ethnicity and your ethnicity mm -hmm. isn't like represented, you know, um, I think very often women are the supporting characters in a story about a man, right? And so it sort of makes you feel like, oh, their story isn't as important, it's not as interesting. And I think, um, you know, it's like in society, I think women weren't economically able to, we haven't been able to support ourselves in the past. Now we are more than ever. So it's just like, what would our stories be like if we didn't have to get married in order to, you know, pay our bills, right? Like, what if we just did what we wanted? What, what if we told the stories that we wanted to tell? I think that's exciting that now, you know, people are starting to care about this more. I mean, there's always been the exceptions of the, cool movies that were, you know, female stories, but really often they were written and directed by men. So it's exciting to think of more female directors telling stories from their own point of view. And I was just wondering what kind of challenges that character brings for an actor like you? Well, I think, you know, Josh Boone, who yeah. is the writer, he kind of, I think, updated it in a way where he keeps, you know, he's loyal to the yeah. amazing things about the story, but like there's definitely like black characters in it that weren't in the original, mm -hmm. you know, t miniseries that weren't in the book. Like, I think my character is more sympathetic in the way that he wrote it. Because in the way that he wrote it, it's really from the male point of view and the woman's like, oh my God, she's annoying, kind of, you know? But in this story, you kind of get a little bit more of both of the characters' points of view. But, you know, so often stories are told from the male point of view. So, you, you know, as a woman, you kind of have to make your story interesting to yourself. But I do feel like Josh approached it from a more, um, He's more empathetic towards her character maybe than it, than Stephen King was in the book. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. yeah, honestly, it was really fun um, just getting to play different characters and um, just you know, there's a, there's an obvious way you could play it, but I hope she's the character's more complicated than that. You know, there's things about her that are that are dark and some things that I think are really sympathetic. <laughs> well, I wanted to write a story about just being a woman in Hollywood and wanting to tell female stories, but everyone says nobody cares, right? And they said, no, female stories don't make money and nobody cares about them. And also just that I grew up Catholic and um, I was told that I was going to go to hell for having premarital sex. So it's kind of this idea of, and I think it's even harder on women in society, but how do you get over this sort of religious programming of your past to feel good about your own sexuality and not feel like it's something bad or shameful? Like, that was my own journey, so I just wanted to share that, because I thought that's a story that no one else is telling, you know, especially not from a female point of view. Mm -hmm. Them. What was the experience like working with uh, David Lynch on Twin Peaks? Because there's always such fascinating stories when you talk about his, you know, work process. He's such a character. He's like super interesting. Um, I mean, I learned how to do t t uh, transcendental meditation because mm -hmm. of him. So he's inspiring in that way. I think he definitely. Uh, I've been doing that my whole life since Twin Peaks. So that made a huge difference in my life. Um, but obviously, he's a really excellent artist and. Um, I, I was I was a huge fan of that show, so when I got to be on it, I was really pinching myself. I had a huge crush on Agent Cooper. Like. <laughs> um, I mean, there's definitely I love the movie The Farewell. The mm -hmm. Farewell. I really thought that was great. I actually thought Hustlers was really good, even mm. though I think they kind of the commercials made it seem like it was more pop. It was actually quite a fun like crime drama. Um, I mean, I watched Little Women, and um, I thought the late night movie with um, Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling okay. was really clever and charming and good. Um, I mean, there's definitely guy movies I like too, like Dark Waters, I thought that was really good. Um, what did you think about Little Women? I thought it was good. Yeah. I think she's really good, yeah. It was cool. I like her a lot, Carla. Yeah, yeah. She's super talented. Yeah, <laughs> I think she's very, very good. But I love The Farewell. I would say maybe that's my top. I, I don't know. I just thought that movie was amazing. But especially when you deal with younger people who are getting into the business and everything, do you ever try to, or would you have any advice for um, taking care of themselves? Because as an actor, you really have to be in touch with yourself to be able to play something else. Um, do you have any, well, your own way of doing it, or do you have anything to to impart to younger people about taking care of the, the tool you're working with? Well, I had an acting coach and he would always say you have to have um, the skin of a rhino and the heart of a baby. 
because you know you're going and you're acting and you have to be this vulnerable you know you have to show these different emotional sides but you have to also have this skin where it's like you know if some people don't like you if someone says something bad about you if you don't get a job you have to just be able to let it go so um, yeah it's very important to because obviously there's so many talented people that have died or become drug addicts or overdosed you know it's keeping yourself healthy and mentally stable is very important and have you ever come across something where it's just like where a role is just said something like, I just cannot relate to this. This is a tough one for me. Well, sometimes there are stories that are really dark and you kind of wonder, like, should I go there? Um, but I think you need a good support system around you and a good amount of, like, self-care and to detox, you know, yourself and a way of getting into the roles that doesn't just destroy your soul. Like, sometimes people just use a lot of their own personal background stories, for, like actors when you have to do emotional scenes. So... I think sometimes if you can use your imagination and not just use your own personal life over and over again, that that is helpful. Because yeah. then you're just going home every night depressed about your own personal life. <laughs> I was thinking about the uh, the term like cult actor, mm -hmm. right? And you know, just like some of the movies that you've been in, like obviously that you know, like you've been in a movie with David Bowie or William mm -hmm. S. Burroughs or whatever, right? You're mm -hmm. kind of like obvious signifiers for that. But I also feel like one of the kind of core characteristics that a lot of cult actors have is that ability to mix like uncanny horror with mm -hmm. comedy, mm -hmm. which I think is like maybe one of the hallmarks of like your aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering if you feel like that term applies to you, mm -hmm. and in a larger sense, is it still mm -hmm. possible to be a cult actor in the digital age? Mm -hmm. um, well, I do. I'm a huge fan of cult movies, so I'm happy to be a cult actor. Like one of my favorite all-time movies was Harold and Maude. Like I felt like that mm -hmm. really inspired my life. Like her character was a huge inspiration to me. And I definitely love comedy, so I think to find the humor in dark situations, dramatic or scary, I always really admire people that do that, so I, I hope to do that too. Like I hope actually, I think my character in The Stand, one thing I liked about it is that they, she does have some humorous moments, so I'm really grateful if I ever get like a funny line. Is there someone, a director or an actress or a writer or whatever, an actor that you haven't worked with yet that you really, really would love to? Wow, there's so many people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many people. I mean, I like Wes Anderson. <laughs> um, speaking of like quirky comedy, but I mean, there's so many different amazing people that it's hard to think of, but he's one person I just mm -hmm. throw out there.